Welcome, medical students, to a lecture on primary peritoneal carcinomatosis, PPC. Today, we will explore this rare and aggressive cancer that affects the abdominal lining. We will cover the definition, causes, incidence, and unique features of PPC compared to other peritoneal tumors. We will also discuss its development, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment options, prognostic factors, and future directions in management. Let's begin this enlightening journey. Primary peritoneal carcinomatosis, PPC, is a malignancy that arises from the peritoneum, the serous membrane that lines the abdominal cavity. It is distinct from other peritoneal tumors, such as mesothelioma or peritoneal metastasis from other primary cancers, as PPC typically originates from the peritoneal lining itself. PPC shares a similar histological appearance to ovarian cancer, and both entities often have overlapping clinical presentations and treatment approaches. The development and progression of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis involve complex molecular mechanisms and genetic alterations. One of the most frequently observed genetic abnormalities in PPC is the mutation of the TP53 gene, commonly known as P53. This gene plays a pivotal role in regulating the cell cycle, DNA repair, and programmed cell death, and its mutation is associated with increased genomic instability and cancer development. Additionally, mutations in the BRCA genes, particularly BRCA1 and BRCA2, also contribute to the pathogenesis of PPC, as they are involved in DNA repair pathways. Patients with primary peritoneal carcinomatosis may present with a variety of nonspecific abdominal symptoms. These can include abdominal distension, bloating, early satiety, weight loss, and gastrointestinal disturbances such as constipation or diarrhea. It is crucial for clinicians to recognize these symptoms promptly, as they can aid in early detection and timely intervention. Multiple diagnostic modalities can be utilized to confirm the diagnosis of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. Imaging techniques such as computed tomography, CT, scans, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, and positron emission tomography, PET, scans are commonly employed to visualize the extent of disease involvement and assess for the presence of regional or distant metastasis. These imaging studies provide valuable information for treatment planning and prognosis assessment. Tumor markers, such as cancer antigen 125, CA125, have a significant role in the diagnosis, monitoring, and prognostication of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. CA125 is elevated in the majority of patients with PPC and often serves as a useful biomarker for disease activity and treatment response. However, it is important to note that CA125 levels can also be elevated in various other benign and malignant conditions, necessitating its interpretation in conjunction with clinical findings. Surgery forms the cornerstone of treatment for primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. Cytoreductive surgery, CRS, a comprehensive surgical procedure aimed at removing all visible tumor nodules, is typically combined with hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, HIPEC. CRS involves meticulous excision of peritoneal tumors, resection of the involved organs if necessary, and peritoneal cavity lavage with heated chemotherapy agents. HIPEC aims to eradicate microscopic tumor cells and prevent disease recurrence within the peritoneal cavity. Chemotherapy plays a vital role in the management of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis, either as neoadjuvant therapy before surgery or as adjuvant therapy after CRS and HIPEC. Platinum-based drugs, such as cisplatin or carboplatin, in combination with taxanes like paclitaxel, are commonly utilized due to their demonstrated efficacy in ovarian cancer. These agents target rapidly dividing cells and have shown substantial tumor regression and improved survival in patients with PPC. The emerging field of targeted therapies has shown promise in the management of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. Molecular profiling of tumors allows identification of specific genetic alterations that may be targeted by novel therapies. Poly, ADP ribose, polymerase, PARP, inhibitors and angiogenesis inhibitors are being investigated in clinical trials as potential treatment options for PPC, particularly in patients with BRCA gene mutations or overexpression of vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, receptors. Several prognostic factors influence the outcome and survival of patients with primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. Disease stage, tumor grade, lymph node involvement, and the presence of residual disease after surgery are some of the key factors that impact prognosis. A thorough understanding of these prognostic indicators guides treatment decisions, facilitates appropriate patient counseling, and helps clinicians estimate overall survival. The provision of palliative care is crucial in optimizing the quality of life for patients with advanced primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. Palliative care professionals provide comprehensive symptom management, psychosocial support, and end-of-life care. 
This multidimensional approach addresses not only physical symptoms but also emotional, social, and spiritual needs of patients and their families. Primary peritoneal carcinomatosis is known for its high potential for disease recurrence. Recurrence can manifest as local-regional relapse within the peritoneal cavity or distant metastasis to other organs. Regular monitoring with clinical examination, imaging studies, and tumor marker assessment is crucial to identify recurrent disease early. Management of recurrent PPC often involves a multimodal approach, including repeated cytoreductive surgeries, targeted therapies, and enrollment in clinical trials investigating novel treatment strategies. The field of primary peritoneal carcinomatosis is rapidly evolving, with ongoing research focusing on novel targeted therapies, immunotherapies, and combination treatment approaches. Clinical trials investigating these emerging therapies provide valuable insights into their potential efficacy and safety. It is through these endeavors that we hope to further enhance the treatment outcomes and prognosis for patients with primary peritoneal carcinomatosis. Primary peritoneal carcinomatosis presents diagnostic and management difficulties. This lecture discussed its complex nature, including molecular pathogenesis, surgery, and medical therapies. Staying informed of research advancements will lead to improved patient outcomes and quality of life. Thank you and stay curious in gastroenterology.